Over the past half decade, the four horsewomen of WWE have gotten much of the credit for the rise of female wrestling. However, one performer that has often gone underrated is Alexa Bliss. Yes, a five-time champion and two-time tag champion, Alexa is without a doubt one of the most decorated women's wrestlers in WWE history, not to mention her character development. From being a manager in NXT, to becoming the goddess of the main roster, all the way to her most recent run under her supernatural gimmick. But how did she get to this point? Well, join us today as we take a deep dive into her entire career journey so far in 5 Feet of Fury, The Alexa Bliss Story. Alexis Joanne Louise Kaufman was born on August 9, 1991 in Columbus, Ohio and it was there that she would fall in love with all things sports from a young age. In fact, by the time she was at school, she was already taking part in track and field, kickboxing, softball, and gymnastics. And on top of this, once she'd reached Hilliard Davidson High School, she would have joined the cheerleading team too, with her continuing this well into her college years, by which point she would have reached Division I status. But these weren't the only interests she had as a youth, because Alexis was also an avid fan of everything WWE and Disney, with the former being a big favorite of hers during the Attitude Era and beyond, and the latter continuing to be an obsession even to this day, with her regularly posting about her frequent visits to Walt Disney World on her social media accounts. That said, her childhood wasn't all roses, as while she was still at school at the age of 15, the youngster would develop an eating disorder, with this being bad enough to turn life-threatening at one point as she lost a vast amount of weight and had to be hospitalized. In the end though, she was able to overcome this, something she did in part by getting involved in fitness competitions, with this allowing her to get herself back in physical shape while also being comfortable in her own body. And so much success would she end up finding in these fitness competitions that, at one point, she would take part in the Arnold Classic, putting on an impressive showing there, all while elsewhere, she was getting a master's degree in medical dietetics at the University of Akron. Still, despite all the success she was having, there had always been one ambition she'd quietly harbored throughout her childhood. One that, now that she was in top physical shape, Alexis felt comfortable pursuing as, upon graduating, she would decide to attend a WWE tryout in May of 2013. And so impressed were WWE officials with what they saw from her there that, despite having no prior wrestling training, they would sign her up to a developmental contract at this point, sending her over to NXT from there where she could learn the ways of the ring in the WWE Performance Center. Only two months after that and she would be thrown right into the deep end when she made her first televised appearance on the black and yellow brand, congratulating the inaugural NXT Women's Champion Paige at this time. But that would be a one-off cameo. She clearly wasn't ready to hit the ring, so from there she would continue to work on developing both her in-ring skills and her gimmick, the earliest incarnation of which would see her portray a Tinkerbell-like fairy character, one heavily based on her love of Disney. And while she was working on this, she would continue to get cameo appearances on screen too, so as to get audiences introduced to her, with the next one being her role as a ring announcer on the November 20th episode of NXT. After that then, she, alongside Sasha Banks and Charlotte Flair, would also appear as part of Triple H's elaborate entrance at WrestleMania 30. That said, none of these would really allow her a chance to shine and show what she had learned. No, this wouldn't come until the May 8, 2014 edition of the developmental brand when she finally made her in-ring debut, now going by the name of Alexa Bliss as she formally introduced audiences then to her fairy gimmick, one complete with cheerleader's uniform and glitter which she would blow all over the ringside area as part of her entrance. And while this was something to get her started, it would be a lie to call the gimmick a success with the whole thing ultimately being a little too generic to let Bliss show her personality and get over with the fans. Still, she would work with it for the time being, picking up victories over the likes of Alicia Fox and even getting to share the ring with future legends like Charlotte Flair and Bayley in her early days. And it was also around this time that her personal life would hit a high point too when she began dating fellow NXT trainee Buddy Murphy, with the two remaining an item throughout their developmental careers and well into their time on the main roster from there. Sadly though, 
towards the end of 2014, an injury would have taken the Ohio girl out of action for a few months, this stalling her progress but also having the silver lining of allowing her to recalibrate and think what was working and what wasn't working for her character. That was why when she returned on the March 11th, 2015 episode of NXT, there would have been some alterations so as to have dropped the fairy gimmick, with her now acting as something of a bratty heel and aligning herself with Murphy and his tag partner Wesley Blake. And from there, with fans now finally able to latch onto something with her, Alexa quickly found success as she played the dual role of helping Murphy and Blake to hold on to their tag team titles, all while rising up the singles ranks of the women's division on her own merits too having a notable feud with Carmella around this time, and even getting to pick up a count-out victory over the, at the time, NXT Women's Champion, Sasha Banks. In fact, come October of 2015, the rookie would get to have a full-blown program over the women's title, with this seeing her go up against the then-champion Bayley on a number of occasions between that point and November. Sadly though, this would all climax with her losing to the hugger on the November 18th episode of NXT after William Regal had barred Murphy and Blake from ringside, thus stopping them from being able to interfere in the match. Still, Alexa wouldn't let this loss keep her down for long, as come January of 2016, she would have thrown herself right back into the mix, entering herself into a battle royal to determine the new number one contender to the title. But unfortunately, she would end up losing that match too. And, to make matters worse, soon after this, she, Wesley Blake, and Buddy Murphy would all undergo an on-screen split. And while this may have seemed like a strange decision at the time given the popularity of the act, there was a method to the madness as, unbeknownst to Bliss herself, main roster officials had been keeping a close eye on her progress, and, liking what they were seeing, they decided it was time to call her up to the main roster. That was how, on July 19, 2016, the NXT rookie would get the surprise of a lifetime when she found out, along with the rest of the world, that she would be the newest member of the SmackDown brand, with her making her on-screen debut there just seven days later, now sporting a slightly updated character that saw her further build upon her bratty, mean girl ways by taking inspiration from comic book character Harley Quinn and adding a calculating, unhinged element to this. And that was something she would further emphasize as the weeks and months went on through her frequent use of cosplay, something she had long been a fan of in real life, with her often incorporating the likes of Harley Quinn and others she was a fan of into her ring gear going forward. But perhaps more so than her look or her in-ring work at this point, what really became apparent about Alexa during those early days was that, when given a microphone, she was a natural at cutting promos, arguably the best on the entire women's roster at that point in fact. And given how much of a fan Vince McMahon has always been of people who can cut great promos and build an exciting character, it should come as no surprise that he quickly fell in love with the Ohio native, from there rocketing her up the card as, on the October 9th episode of SmackDown, less than a month after her debut, she would pick up a major victory over Becky Lynch, with her following this up by continuing to feud with the Irish woman as she established herself as the division's top heel. And when, over the course of this program, Lynch would become the inaugural SmackDown Women's Champion, Alexa wouldn't be content to play her second fiddle for long. No, she would quickly make it her aim to take the title away from her in fact, something she was ultimately able to do at December 4th's Tables, Ladders and Chairs pay-per-view when she defeated the champ in a tables match. Yes, it was clear by now that, even at this early stage in the game, WWE saw their new SmackDown Women's Champion as a superstar. And with her already masterful mic work and fully fleshed out character, it was hard to argue with this assessment. And if there was any doubt about her ability to keep up with the schedule of a fighting champion in the ring going forward, this would quickly be proven wrong when she had numerous successful defenses heading into 2017, at one point even managing to defeat her arch-rival Becky Lynch once again in a steel cage match on the January 17th episode of SmackDown, after she'd introduced her new backup, Mickey James. Yes, as if she wasn't already a dominating enough presence, Alexa now became completely unstoppable with James by her side. That said, for as tight-knit a unit as they initially appeared to be, it soon became apparent that Mickey wanted the top spot for her own too, and eventually, things would turn sour between them and they would split, with this ending up being a precursor to the champ losing her gold to Naomi at WrestleMania 33. 
Still, this wasn't the end of the world because by April, the former fitness model would have found new worlds to conquer when she was moved over to Raw during the 2017 draft. With her there quickly setting her sights on the top dog on the red brand, the, at the time, Raw Women's Champion, Bayley. And not only did this represent a great opportunity for Bliss to do what she could never do on NXT then, it also gave her the chance to make history by becoming the first woman to hold both brands' world titles. So with this goal driving her forward, she would win a fatal four-way match on the April 17th episode of Raw to become the number one contender for the Huggers' gold, with the two from there setting their showdown for April 30th's Payback pay-per-view. And at Payback, Alexa would end up doing exactly what she told everyone she was going to when she pinned the champ to take home the belt for herself, this fully establishing her as the most dominating force in the women's division at that time. After that, and she would have a rematch with Bayley that saw the two face off in a kendo stick on a pole match a month later, with the Ohio girl winning this one again and proving to be so good in her role that the hugger even got more than a few boos throughout the buildup. So, having definitively defeated one of the horsewomen then, Bliss next set her sights on another member of the stable, that being Sasha Banks, as the two began a feud heading into that year's SummerSlam. But what made this one all the more interesting was that, at the time, there was rumored real-life heat between the two, something which had allegedly begun during their days on NXT and had subsequently reached public attention after they'd started throwing some passive-aggressive tweets back and forth during the build-up to their match. And while this certainly brought an extra level of interest to the match, when it did finally get in the ring, things remained professional, as the two worked together to have a good showing on August 20th at the Big Summer Show with Alexa ultimately losing the title here after tapping out to Banks' finisher, The Bank Statement. As with all Sasha Banks' title reigns at this time, though, this would end up being a fleeting run, and so, just eight days later on Raw, Little Miss Bliss would have regained her gold, with this making her a two-time champion on both Raw and SmackDown. And after that, the once again Raw Women's Champion would go on a string of successful defenses throughout the remainder of the year that saw her defeat the likes of Emma, Bailey, and Mickey James. And as if that wasn't enough, come the dawn of 2018, the victories would continue to pile up for her, with Bliss winning the inaugural Women's Elimination Chamber match on February 25th of that year so as to further cement herself as the top dog in the division, a division that included several other heavyweights by this point. Ultimately though, her reign would have to come to an end eventually, and this would happen at WrestleMania 34 when she faced off against her former friend and now heated foe Nia Jax, with the overwhelming size and strength of the challenger just being too much for the heel champ to overcome on that night. But it wasn't like this loss would bump her out of relevancy because, still high on her as a performer, WWE made sure to feature the Ohio girl in plenty of other ways around this time, with one of the most memorable of these being her inclusion in that year's Mixed Match Challenge, where she would form Team Little Big with Braun Strowman, the whole thing being a play off the size discrepancies between the 6'6 Strowman and the 5'0 Bliss. And given the more lighthearted nature of the Mixed Match Challenge, much of which was aired on WWE's social media accounts, the two would even get to playfully tease a romance with each other, something which wouldn't really continue over to TV, but gave fans something to tune in for at the time anyway. Come the summer of 2018 though, the Ohio girl had decided that she wanted to return to the title picture, and so it was then that she would enter herself in the women's Money in the Bank ladder match at that June's titular pay-per-view. And on that night, once again proving that she was one of the top acts in the division, Alexa would even go on to pick up the win, with her ultimately choosing to cash in her contract later that night, pinning the then-champion Nia Jax to take home the belt once more. Unfortunately though, Nia's opponent that night, former UFC bantamweight champion Ronda Rousey, was not happy with this result, and so this would end up leading to her starting a feud with Bliss in the weeks that followed, with the big title match between the two ultimately being set for August 19th's SummerSlam. And despite being able to duck her challenger throughout the lead-up, on the night itself, there was no escape for the five-time women's champion, as she would quickly fall prey to the MMA star, getting predictably tapped out in just four minutes. And when she got a rematch at the following month's Hell in a Cell pay-per-view, things ended up going even worse this time, as not only would Alexa be beaten soundly yet again, but during the course of the bout, she would pick up a nasty concussion that would end up taking her out of in-ring competition for the foreseeable future. 
So now easing into more of a talking role for the time being, the Ohio native would stand in the corner of Mickey James and Alicia Fox as they faced off against legends of the division Trish Stratus and Lita at the all-women's pay-per-view Evolution that October. And this was a bitter pill to swallow for her as it turned out, because she'd originally been booked to be a part of that match, with her hoping to finally realize her dream there of sharing the ring with her childhood idol, Stratus. But of course, given her health at that point, this couldn't happen though, and so instead, she would move on to being the captain for Team Raw during that year's Survivor Series, calling the shots from ringside there as her soldiers went to war with Team SmackDown in a winning effort. And so good a job did she do here that, the very next night on Raw, she would be named the new kayfabe head of the Raw women's division, from there acting as an authority figure over her peers for the remainder of the year, all up until the point that the McMahons would return to TV in December. After that then, Bliss would move on to new ventures when she started her own talk show segment, A Moment of Bliss. And this was where she would remain until finally, on January 27, 2019 at the Royal Rumble, she would make her long-awaited return during the titular match, lasting 12 minutes and picking up two eliminations before getting thrown over the top rope herself. But of course, given that she hadn't competed in five months at that point, there was still surely some ring rust to work off something Alexa would continue to work on over the next few months as she entered into a tag team with Nikki Cross. And it was this team that would eventually see Little Miss Bliss turn babyface for the first time while on the main roster, with her proving to be a natural in this role as, alongside Cross, she would become an imposing force in the women's tag team division, even beating the Iconics to win the women's tag titles on the August 5th episode of Raw. After that, proving that their victory hadn't just been a fluke, they would successfully defend the belts on a number of occasions, fending off the likes of Fire and Desire, all before ultimately falling to the Kabuki Warriors that October. But that wouldn't be the end of the beef between the two teams as it turned out, because by night one of WrestleMania 36 on April 4, 2020, the one now infamous for being held inside an empty performance center warehouse, Bliss and Cross would be able to regain their titles, this making them two-time women's tag champions in the process. And while this run is less well remembered due to there being no crowds allowed at the shows at this time, it did see them have some good matches against the likes of Sasha Banks and Bayley, with those two being the ones who would ultimately beat them for the belts on July 6th of that year. So now, no longer a tag team champion, it seemed like it was time for a new evolution in the character of Alexa Bliss, and this was something that would end up happening not long after when, following an attack from Bray Wyatt's alter ego The Fiend on the July 31st episode of SmackDown, she would begin acting strangely, almost as if she'd been put into some kind of trance, this leaving her partner Nikki Cross concerned for her well-being as she began to change up her look more and more, eventually regressing to more of a schoolgirl as she turned her back on her friend and became the full-blown herald of the fiend, often signaling his imminent arrival with increasingly spooky segments. And while fan reaction on this new incarnation of her character was mixed, Alexa threw herself into it with gusto, fully playing up to the role, and at times, feeling like the Harley Quinn to Wyatt's Joker. And given that Wyatt was heavily involved in a feud with Randy Orton at this time, the new evil Alexa Bliss would regularly get in his head going forward, even beating him in an intergender match at March 21st, 2021's Fastlane, after much shenanigans had ensued. Come WrestleMania a month later though, clearly feeling like she had now outgrown The Fiend, she would cost him the blow-off match with Orton, with this ending up being Wyatt's final write-off from the company, as he would be released from his contract a few months later. And so, with her original mentor now gone, Alexa would introduce a new friend in the form of Lily, a doll she would frequently talk to and use to psych out her opponents in the weeks and months that followed. And this would soon see her draw the ire of Shayna Baszler, with the two entering into a brief feud from there, as the former MMA fighter was scripted to run away, scared from a child's doll. Since then though, she's had a program with Eva Marie that went somewhat better, and would ultimately see her pick up a victory over the diva of the past at August 16th, 2021 SummerSlam. After that, however, a loss to Charlotte Flair and the subsequent destruction of Lily would see Alexa take a sabbatical from WWE TV, a position she remains in to this day as she undergoes surgery for some nagging health issues. Of course, it remains to be seen whether or not when she returns it'll be as this spooky incarnation of her character once more, or perhaps a reversion back to the mean girl gimmick of her earlier days on the main roster. 
Either way, given her mic skills, her ability to keep up in the ring, and her excellent command of whatever character she's given to work with, we are sure that Alexa Bliss will remain a featured player in the WWE women's division for some time, because just like the Bowling for Soup song that was written about her says, to both them and to her fans, she's the champ of everything. Well guys, what did you think of the video? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, as well as follow WrestleWithAndy on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.